Right, Vuelta Espana start, kicked off yesterday with a short time trial, seven kilometers around Burgos. Obviously, Primoz Roglic absolutely destroyed the field. But the question is, well, number one, how much of a strong performance was it by Roglic? And number two, how actually will this affect the race? As is it actually important that he bashed people in a seven minute, eight minute TT, which is sort of what you'd expect. Um, so first of all, just go through the numbers, look at the look at the effort. So this was uh, old Tom Scully who finished 10 seconds down on Primoz Roglic. Um, the, the speeds always seem wrong. I don't know if it's just they measure it shorter than the actual distance or what. But anyway, 490 normalized for nine minutes is bonkers. Does he weigh 85 kilos? I don't think so. But that doesn't really matter. It's not really a what's bikilo. Well, the first part is a what's bikilo thing. But even then, it's so quick. Like, you know, if you're doing 37k an hour, it's all like getting idle and having good numbers. Obviously, weight is important. However, it's not as important as a pure proper mountaintop finish. Anyway, up here, he wasn't the quickest. Um, Sepkus, I think, was did about 440 watts for three minutes, which is like seven and a bit watts per kilo, which is obviously very strong considering that they were up and down and it wasn't really a proper climb. Uh, but yeah, so we can see here when he's actually climbing, he's doing more like 600 watts or close to um, 26k and out, 6% gradient. So maybe that is right. Seven watts per kilo would be about that. So maybe, maybe his weight is accurate, but he seems like a big boy. I didn't know he was so big. The descent was very important. That's how Aaron Baru, Aaron Baru wasn't that quick on the first part. Obviously, he was quick, but on the descent, he gained a lot of time. I believe that's probably similar to Roman Bardet, who also had a very good time trial. Um, and then the last part was 440 watts. But again, that sort of underestimates because it was quite technical. Um, and 500 watts for sort of a minute here um, is the more important thing. But yeah, if you look at the course up here, very technical. So we've gone through the numbers. Basically, I, you know, Roglic is probably doing maybe 4.30-ish, something like that, maybe 4.20, like normalized, I'd say like close to seven watts per kilo, but eight minutes would be what I'd predict, maybe a little worse, I'm not 100% sure. But anyway, it doesn't actually matter too much what Roglic did, mainly because I don't think this is actually a very important time trial at all. Obviously, first of all, it's very short, so the time gaps aren't huge. We can go through the time gaps here. So Roglic is obviously one, and he is the first GC contender really, and if we're gonna look down, Egan Bernal had a shocker, um, but the only man who really had a, a worse shocker, well, Carthy didn't have a good one, lost 30 seconds, um, was Mikel Lander. Lander ended up losing 40 seconds. Now, that is quite a lot. I'm not going to lie. 40 seconds on this is pretty terrible. Um, there's no there's no two ways around it. Um, Bernal and Carthy losing 30 seconds isn't great either. But a lot of them didn't really lose too much time. And I think even if you do lose 40 seconds, I'm not sure it's indicative of what's going to happen in the welter. So if we look more at the GC contenders, Sepp Kuss had a good day out. Uh, Vlasov had a very good day out. Uh, Yates and Mass and Bardet all had a very good days out. Uh, yeah, Yates maybe you'd expect this, but for Mass and Bardet to finish only 17 seconds down, I mean, that's like on a mountaintop finish is basically using six seconds and a bonus second to Roglic. I mean, it's really not very much, is it, in the grand scheme of things. Like on a TT, on the first day, which Roglic is always very, very good at. If you think about it, like let's say we go back to Giro 2020, uh, 2019, sorry, like, you know, he was unstoppable on the first um, first day, uh, first <laughs> time trial um, to Bologna, and then obviously it was quite bad in the last one. And similar story maybe in 2020 as well, um, in terms of the fact that he wasn't that good in the first, well, he was very good in the first TT, not so good in the second TT, as we all know. Um, and then apart from that, uh, Caruso had quite a good one. Same with Miguel Angel Lopez. Um, but the question is, like, you're like, okay, well, this is, if we're going to extrapolate, this is, what, seven kilometers long, and people have lost 30, 40 seconds. Well, how much are they going to lose over, you know, the 34 kilometer TT on the last stage? And it's a very good question, because obviously, you'd expect on the climbs, you know, it's, it's such a different thing. You know, you, you're going to have, uh, you'd expect Lander to maybe do better. We're just going to take Lander as an example, but it applies with, also with Carthy and Bernal about, yeah, they're going to do better on the climb. You'd expect Roglic always has some bad days in a Grand Tour. It just depends if you can exploit them. Think about the last stage of uh, the Welter last year. He didn't look great. He also didn't look great on the Angler route, and he also didn't look great on the really wet climb that Izaguirre won and Carapaz managed to actually gap him. So those three mountaintop finishes. But last Grand Tour, Ineos didn't have enough strong enough team to actually, like, destroy the field um, and expose Roglic early, like especially the last one, they had no one. But this time is the opposite. So then you think, okay, there are, there'll be some mountaintop finishes where Roglic will have a, not a shocker, but he'll lose time for sure. And then the short punch he wants, he probably won't lose too much time. But, you know, even if you gain two minutes, the question is, will you lose that in the time trial? And my thinking is, is twofold. So obviously if you just multiplied it by like five, let's say, 
you know, you'd expect Mikael Landis to lose about two and a half minutes, okay, maybe more, which is a lot. So, but it, it, so then he, to win, he has to gain three minutes on Roglic before the final TT because he's 40 seconds back now, maybe a bit more. Um, but I don't think that's the, actually what he needs to do because number one, if you're gaining time on Roglic, it probably means that in the last week, you're doing better than him. So Roglic's performance isn't going to be the standard. So if you're gaining time, then you're, you know, relatively wise, if you're both starting here and, you know, that's how much time he puts you on, you'll be here, he'll be there. Okay, his time trialing ability will still beat you, but because he's just not as good, like in general fitness, like on a climb, then it means the, the gap won't be as big. Um, so, you know, for instance, like Egan Bernal, often on the last day TT, doesn't actually do as badly as you'd expect because he's going really well while a lot of other people are really knackered. Um, and but then on the first ATT, he might actually lose a lot more time than you expect um, just because everyone's super fresh and his fresh time trialing is probably not as good as maybe his tired time trialing. So that's one thing to consider is just how everyone's actually feeling in the last week. But the other thing to consider is that it's got a lot more hills. So it's got 1k at 8%, which is good enough to think that Roglic, okay, if he's going well, maybe he's a better climber than them. But on that thing, they're not going to lose. So that's one kilometer, two kilometers where they're not going to lose any time to him. They might lose maybe five seconds, but if it was like pan flat, they might lose like a, or a lot more time uh, in that. And it's the same with this one kilometer, 6%. So, and I'm sure there's more um, undulations than you expect. I mean, the, the graphics are always hard to tell, but you think this is goes from like sort of 40 meters to 200 meters. So that's 160 meter climb as well. So that's also why I don't think the time gaps will be as, as large as you expect. And this is the final couple kilometers again, hilly. So in that sense, is this time trial very important for Primoz Roglic? Yes, it shows that he's better than everyone else in a nine kilometer prologue, um, which is not too, well, it's a TT, but we'll call it a prologue because it basically is. Um, but apart from that, I don't think it means too much. I think the thing that's good is that there are a lot of GC contenders who've done better than you'd expect. Um, and so, yeah, what, what we'll see uh, in the next couple of weeks, I don't know. But I think um, his team is, is good, but it's not absolutely outrageous. And if Ineos managed to get Carapaz, Bernal and Yates all in good positions, or probably, hopefully for them, just two of them, two of them in the top two, three or four, then I think there could be chaos in the last week, um, which should be good. Same with uh, Bahrain with Padun, Caruso, Landa, Maida, Pools, very strong team. Uh, so I think it's, it's going to be a really exciting race. And I think Egan, uh, Egan Bernal, I don't know if he's going to do it. I think I think he's, he's someone who, who could definitely do it. Um, but I still think, obviously, Roglic is the favourite. But with a stronger team and more competition than these last two welter wins, I think it's going to be tough. But anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And we'll see you in the next one.